Hello everybody, this is Mr. Storm. Today we're going to start our, our Arkanoid project. Uh, we're going to learn how to create a, uh, an Arkanoid game, uh, somewhat kind of like Breakout. Um, I don't know if you've ever played Arkanoid before, but it's, uh, it's a pretty cool idea. It's a pretty, pretty cool game. Um, first thing we want to do is obviously download our resources file here. Uh, if you forgot how to do that, all you have to do is click on the zip file and you can download it right here. Click download and it will drop it down here in Google Chrome. If you're using some other web browser, uh, you'll have to figure out where, uh, where to get your files from there. You can click the little up arrow, click show in folder, and that'll pull up a folder where your uh, download is, probably in your downloads folder. You can just go ahead and drag that onto the desktop. Now what we want to do is we want to extract these files from this zip file. We don't want to keep them in the zip file. So we can right click and we can extract all. We can put them on the desktop. That works. Click extract. Another way we could do it is we could just open up, double click the file and drag that out if we wanted to do it that way. So now that that's extracted, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And again, just to organize my project a little bit, I'm going to create a new file or a new folder, sorry, uh, with my name. And I will drop that in there. You should have a file with your name on it already on the desktop. And this is going to be the Arkanoid project, so I will call this Arkanoid. And I'll drop that in there. And I'm, at, I'm just going to rename this to Resources. Perfect, so now everything's organized the way I want it to. Now it's time for me to open up Unity. So I'm gonna open up Unity and let that fire up. So I'm really obsessed with making sure all my files are, are organized in a way that I can find them uh, so I don't get lost. Um, I'm, I'm obsessed with making it work that way in Unity, making it work uh, in my just regular file system um, the reason why is because I've been there before. I've been there where you're trying to find a file, you just cannot find it. You don't know where it is, right? The reason why we get to that point is because we're not paying attention to where we're putting files. We're not coming up with an organization plan for our files before our projects. And video games, I, I don't know of any other project you can do on a computer other than video games that involves as many files as making video games does. So we're going to create a new project in Unity. I'm going to name it Arkanoid. Uh, I'm going to name mine Arkanoid 2 because I'm, I'm pretty sure I already have an Arkanoid in there. I'm going to make sure that it is 2D. And then down here, I'm going to select that. I'm going to, I'm going to put my files where I want them to go. So I'm going to say, I want to go to the desktop. So let's go desktop. I want to go in the Storm folder and in the Arkanoid folder. So this is where I'm going to put my, my project files. Select folder. And I'm going to click create my new project. That's going to take a minute to build. It's going to, it's going to take a minute to, it's going to take a minute to build. <laughs> so while we're waiting, I guess we could do this. We could take a look at what Arkanoid is. Let's do a quick Arkanoid search. So you guys can see what the final product's going to be. So this is Arkanoid. It's an old school game. Um, but uh, we're basically building this. It's going to look a little different, right? There are going to be some different graphical changes, but for the most part, we're going to use the same hexagonal background, the same paddle, the ball, um, that kind of stuff. And essentially, the, the goal is uh, to keep this ball attacking these bricks um, and not let it fall down below the bottom of the of the map. So um, so let's go ahead and get started. So now we have a brand new project. Uh, it's called Ar Arkanoid. First thing I want to do is I want to save my scene. So main. And then it's going to put that scene right there in my assets folder. Okay. Perfect. So now I want to take a look at my camera get my camera set up for my project. Uh, this is an old school game, and so we're gonna keep it with a nice black background. 
Uh, I'm going to change my size to pretty big. I'm going to set it to 123. Make it really, really big. Uh, zoom, 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 zoom. Okay, uh, set it to 123. And then, um, let's see, everything else should be good. Uh, I'm going to turn off the HDR and MSAA. Now I want to start importing my assets. I want to import my, my graphics. So before this gets too complicated, in my assets folder, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this scenes, so I can put my scene in it. And I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it sprites. Okay. And inside my sprites folder, I'm going to import new asset. And I'll actually just import all of my assets. So let's go back to Arkanoid. Resources. I'll just import all of them at, the, at one time. Since we're here, that way we don't have to do multiple steps. Click Import. All right, so now I have all the objects I'm going to need for my game. I have my hexagon background. I have my racket. I have my borders. I have my blocks that we're going to use. And I have the ball. Perfect. All right, so all my... All my stuff is in there. All right, next, um, I want to make sure my hexagon background has the right uh, um, uh, pixels per unit. So remember, we're going to change it to one pixel per unit. Um, I want to change the filter mode to point. I'm going to click Apply. And then I can drag that out into the background. Now, notice that it, it's kind of not exactly in the middle. What I can do is go over here to the transform property, make sure that it's zeroed out completely. So zero, zero, zero. Perfect. So now it's directly in the center of my game. Perfect. Now, so we want to, we're going to introduce a new, I'm going to introduce a new idea in this game. I want to talk about sorting layers. Um, if you think about it, there are, we can, you know, we're talking about a 2D game here, right? And in 2D, there are no uh, layers, right? Uh, in a 2D, 2D game, everything's on the same plane, right? There's no three dimensions, there's no depth, uh, but we can create the illusion of layers. And a matter of fact, we can create actual layers so that things will not interact with each other. Um, it's a really, really helpful tool. So we're gonna create a new sorting layer. Um, so I have my background selected. If I go over here to my sprite renderer portion of the of the hexagon pattern and take a look, I can see that I have this sprite, this hexagon pattern sprite assorted or attached to it. Um, I have a you know material, blah blah blah. But down here in sorting layer, I have default, right? Now, default is what everything is going to be put on, um, but I want to add a new sorting layer. So I'm going to click add sorting layer. It's going to bring up this menu. And I don't have any sorting layers yet, so I'm going to just go ahead and click the plus button, so I have a new layer. And I am going to make this layer, I'm going to call this background. I'm actually going to drag that up above there, so background is a higher priority. So now this, now I have a background sorting layer. So if I click on my hexagon pattern again, I can actually go in here and change the sorting layer to background. Now what that's going to do is that's actually going to allow us to physically separate objects in different layers um, so that they show up uh, on top of or behind or in front of each other um, when we're playing the game. That's going to be important in just a second. So uh, we have our new background layer set. All right, now I want to take a look at my borders because I want to drop my borders in there. So again, I want to make sure that I set my one pixel per unit and set my no filter. Click apply there. I'm going to do that for all three of these before I do anything else. Okay, my border left, my border right, one pixel per unit, and no filter. Apply. Now with these, I can drag these in, just bring them right in and, and put them right on top of the image. So this is my right border, right? This is my left border. We'll zoom in in just a second to get these correct. Okay. Move this around. Ooh, that actually, wow, I just randomly put that exactly in the right spot. But 
that's okay. Let's move this just a little bit. Make sure that lines up perfectly. Okay, now we're just a little bit over. So I'm actually going to select all of these so I can move the whole thing at once and just snuggle it right up there. Okay. Um, let's see. This probably should come down just a little bit. Let's grab this. Bring that down just a little bit. Okay, perfect. And the whole thing probably should come down just a little bit as well. So that it, there we go. So that looks good. Now I have a good background for my game. Okay, now my border obviously has to have some physics applied to it because I don't want I don't want the ball to fly outside of this thing. That's why it's the border. That's its entire job. So I'm gonna have to create a box collider 2D. So physics 2D, box collider. So now it has a box collider around those three border pieces. Great. Um, all right, now let's bring in the racket. Let's go take a look at the racket. Uh, boom, racket. Again, one pixel per square or one pixel per unit and one no filter. Click apply. And I can drag the racket right here in the bottom of the screen. Pretty easy stuff. Now the racket's in there. So now we need to apply some physics to the racket. Of course, the physics or the racket's going to need a 2D box collider, right? Um, let's see. It's also going to need a rigid body, of course, because we're going to move this thing around in in uh, in 3D space or in the physical space. So it has its 2D box collider and its rigid body 2D. Um, let's make sure we turn off the gravity scale so it doesn't fall off the bottom of the map. Uh, and let's constrain its rotation. Make sure that we're not rotating this paddle at all. Um, Okay, perfect. So now we have essentially our game is set up. The only la the last thing we would need to bring in are the the boxes up at the top, are the object of the game and the ball. But right now, I just want to go ahead and, and set up our movement for our racket because I mean this is pretty easy. We've done this before, so we're gonna fly through this real quick. First of all, I want to go back to my assets folder here, and I want to create a new folder called scripts just so we have it and it is there. And then inside of this scripts folder, I can actually create a new C-sharp script right inside the folder. Uh, that's pretty easy. Uh, I'm gonna name this racket. And now what I have to do is, if I click on the racket, I can actually go down and, come on, it's, it's freaking out on me, it's slowing down. All right, I'll give you a second. There we go. Now if I go to the racket and I click Add Component, I can go to Scripts and add an existing script to it. So I'm going to add Racket Script. So now the Racket Script is there. It's just a different way of adding scripts to the game. I know in the Pong tutorial I showed you a different way. This is just a different, this is a different way. It'll help you stay organized. Um, I like this way a little bit better. Anyway, so now the Racket Script is in there. I'm going to double click that, open it up so we can get started. Visual Studio open on the wrong screen. Give me one second. Oh, come on. It's taking a while. It's taking forever. Come on. There we go. All right. Bring Visual Studio over here. Okay, so we have our racket scripts. Let's get that out of the way a little bit. All right, perfect. Now, uh, remember what I do. I want to make sure that my brackets line up so it's easy for me to see where we're looking for rackets and stuff. Uh, I'm going to get rid of, I'm actually just going to get rid of the start. Whoa, come on. I'm going to get rid of the start. Uh, because we're going to actually modify update and we're going to create a fixed update method. Um, and. Again, I will make sure my brackets are in the right spot. So, if you remember from the last game we did, from the Pong game, 
uh, we needed a public value, a public float. We called it speed, and we set it equal to a number, right? Now, because this is a public value, we obviously can change the speed in Unity, and that's why we're creating it as a public value. Um, the next thing we did was inside of our fixed update method, we created a float. I'm going to call this H because it's a horizontal movement. And it's going to be equal to input dot get axis raw. And it's going to be on the horizontal axis. Okay. And then what we did with that get axis raw, what we did with that H variable is we want to get a component, and that component is going to be the rigid body 2D, and specifically the velocity of the rigid body 2D. That's going to be set equal to a new vector 2 dot right, <clears throat> and it's going to be times h times speed. Okay, pretty easy stuff. This is pretty much the same thing as what we did last time, except for it's even less complicated because we're not going to have multiple um, we're not going to have multiple uh, uh, players here. It's just a single player game, so we can keep the horizontal axis here. Um, this right here, the vector two dot right, that basically just means the right movement of that object, uh, and then it's going to be times h, which is the the, the number that we're putting in from that horizontal movement, remember, positive, the, the positive button will produce a positive number, the negative button will produce a negative number. So if we're moving positively, then we're going to be moving right. If we're moving negatively, we're going to be moving left. And all that is going to be times speed. All right. So that's actually it for our movement script. That's it. So we can attach that to Unity, let that run, Let's see if we have any errors down here. My computer is running kind of slow this morning. Come on. It's getting there. All right. So we're good. No errors. So let's go back to Unity. Let's check my racket here. Go down to my racket script. Come on. Update. Update. There we go. So now we have my public variable called speed, and it's my racket. And if we check our inputs, let's check our, our axes, project settings, inputs. Let's check the horizontal axis to see what buttons we need to push. So basically our positive and negative is left, left and right on the keypad or on the arrow buttons or A and D on the WASD. Um, okay, that's fine. That, that works. Let's play the game and see, what, see if it actually works. So now you can see I can move my paddle back and forth. And if I wanted to, again, I can, I can change that. And, and look, I'm stuck, which is good because I have that box collider set up properly. Um, so now I have a moving paddle back and forth. I've set up my GUI. And at this point, we just have to set up the ball. We have to uh, import the, um, we have to set up all the, the blocks and stuff and uh, and we can move on from there. But right now I'm going to go ahead and cut this video. Um, this is a pretty good stopping point. Get to this point. Um, again, most of this is just review of what we've already done. All right. So get to this point. Hopefully you're, you're getting comfortable with the, with these ideas, uh, at, uh, by now, hopefully you're getting comfortable with this stuff by now. Um, if not, you know, this is good practice for you in the next video, we'll do a little bit more review. We're going to introduce a few more, uh, a few more important topics, uh, but for the most part, this has all been review. Um, thank you for watching, and thank you for letting me ramble at the end of the video while I try to figure out how to wrap it up. I'll see you next time.